And now we talk about graphing absolute value formulas or equations. Um, we've got the absolute value of x minus 2. And if you remember, absolute value with these straight lines means uh, that whatever is inside, we ignore the negative. So that once we put in a number for x and we go x minus 2, whatever number it comes up, if it's negative, we ignore the negative and we just treat it as a positive. The two examples they want us to use are x equals 3 and x equals negative 2. So if we put in 3 for x, we get 3 minus 2 is negative 1. And the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. Then we've got negative 2. We put in negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4. The absolute value of negative 4 is 4. Now if we graph that, what we see is that when x goes up, if we start at the origin, if x goes to 1, 1, 2, 3, then it goes to 1. And if it goes to negative 2, it goes to 1, 2, 3, 4. So the lines are always going to be above the x-axis because the, the y can never be negative. When you, whatever x you put in, it's going to produce a positive y. So the line is always going to be above the x-axis. This is the graph of the absolute value of x. The absolute value of x will produce this graph. Uh, there you go. Absolute value of x equals y. Because you put in 0 and it ends up at 0, which is 0 equals 0. And then uh, when you put in positive 1, it goes to 1. When you put in negative 1, it goes to 1. Positive 2, 2. Negative 2, positive 2. Every time you put in a negative, it just automatically makes it positive. So, like I was saying earlier, it'll always be above the x-axis. Now, we start to talk about transformations. We did transformations in those graphs a couple lessons back. Uh, now we're going to transform an absolute value equation. We have one manipulable that when we manipulated it, it moves the graph left to right. Another one where it moves the graph up or down, but never below the x-axis. And one where it shrinks the graph in or moves the graph out. Okay, and here's a, uh, so here's how to transform those things I was just talking about. A vertical translation where you're moving this up and down is the absolute value of x and then plus or minus a number out here. They use k. Uh, if it's outside the brackets, it's going to move it up or down. That's vertical. If it's inside the brackets, it's horizontal. See, outside the brackets, vertical. Inside the brackets, horizontal. This is this is the thing you should write down, uh, or have the formula sheet for the test because this is this is the trickiest bit, and they they do ask several questions about this, if I remember correctly. Uh, Vertical stretch Oh, okay. 
probably should have read this before I started recording, but, you know, you learn as you go. If we put a number outside where it's multiplying, it's going to vertically stretch it, meaning it's going to, like, shrink it in this way. And then uh, it's going to still be pointing up. Here's where you can actually make it point down and go below this. The only way you can make it go below the x-axis is if you multiply the outside by a negative number. So this would, this would produce a positive number, but then if you multiply it by a negative, now it's going to point down, and it's going to go below the x-axis, which I realize I said it would never happen. This math made a liar of me. I, I suppose it happens. Okay, that should be it. Piecewise functions and absolute zero are just very difficult to deal with. Um, I'm sorry, they're, they're hard to teach, they're hard to learn. Um, review this video again or review the PEMFOSTER materials again and hopefully it'll make more sense.